Well, yeah, good morning. Every, yesterday we learned that Moses was the shepherd of the Jewish people and that the Jewish people were like sheep. The Jewish people like animals. And the Rebbe explained how could it possibly be that you call the Jewish people animals? They're human beings. Not only that, it's, not only that it says in the Torah that Jewish people are, are wise. They're intelligent people. <clears throat> so it depends. <clears throat> it's all relative. It depends what you consider to be a man. Then when you see what a real man is, then it, it, uh, you see that everything that's below that is an animal. So compare it to an ant, to, to, to what we call man, as animals are animals, right? A cow, a, 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 a dog, and they haven't got any awareness of anything really greater than themselves. You can teach a cow to do things, you can teach a horse, whatever, you can train them, but still they're only concerned with themselves. They can't be really concerned with anything outside of their own nature, their own, their own nature. <clears throat> they can be loyal to their, their sometimes you see dogs that act like people right they show something but that's only a new that that means they have a new a usual nature it doesn't mean that they are really human in that sense even though animals certainly do are are alive and they have souls and they have feelings and they have a connection to their children at least while they're you know while they're born they, they bring up their children they have these natural traits and human beings also have natural traits. They also have natural. But the big difference between a human being and an animal, and let's just take it in a normal sense of the word, the big difference is, is that a human being can go outside of himself. He can defy his own nature. He can do things for the sake of a greater purpose. A greater purpose. Sometimes that greater purpose can, can, be, can be misleading, right? It can be a greater thing to make war. You know, Genghis Khan says, you know, everybody leave your Napoleon. Everybody leave your worldly pleasures and let's you know do it for the sake of France, killing people and murder and things like that. But but okay, that's misusing this power. But a person can do things for can 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 let's say defy his own nature for a higher nature. He can go according to his conscience. He, he, a person has faith. Right? It's something like, animals don't have that. Animals can only be trained. Says the Rebbe, okay. And that's if you look at the world that all there is, is animals, comparing animals to people. What if you compare animals, what if you compare people to God? What if you compare people, people to God? So God creates the world. There's no human being that's like that. The difference between an animal and a human is nowhere near as great as the difference between a human being and the creator who creates all human beings. In fact, there's more of a similarity between, let's say, a rock and a human being than there is for a human being and, and God. It's just that it says in the Torah that human beings are created in the image of God. So because it says that, so we have to find there must be some quality in human beings that are totally unlike a rock and compared to God. <clears throat> and that is, in general, that a human being, like we said before, can change his nature. And he can become, he can do what God wants. So that a human being can change his nature and do what Napoleon wants, that's sort of like, you know, training a dog or training, a, it's part of his nature, a dog's nature that he can be trained, right? That's why I understand that dogs go in packs and <clears throat> going packs because they want a leader. They want to have a leader. And where does the leader get his thing? Maybe he wants followers. I don't know. I'm not a, a, an animal psychiatrist to understand but the fact is, is that human beings, they can do what God wants. They can change their nature totally to do what God wants. And that's what man was created for. And that's what it means that man, when God created man, he created man in God's image. But Salmenu Kidmutenu created us in his form and in his image. And that every human being has that ability. Well, as soon as Adam sinned, so he sort of took away that that uh, goal for everybody. People didn't know that that even existed, that the whole thing to do what God wants. Why? You have, have a good time. How long have you got to live? You know, just eat, drink, and be merry, etc. You know, do it. <clears throat> so it came, and we had to wait until Abraham came along in order to figure out this thing that you could defy your own nature and really do what God wants. Do nothing for your own benefit. Your nature is only 
to do what God wants, to, to completely, completely give away your nature or put your nature into in tune with only what the Creator wants. That's what Adam was supposed to do, and that's what Abraham began. That's the Jewish people. That's the Jewish people. Okay, but we see the Jewish people, <clears throat> they, they don't defy their own nature. And even the religious people don't defy their own nature, and even I don't defy my own nature. Once in a while. Once in a while. But then there's another thing, says the Rebbe. The Rebbe says another thing. There's what's called defying your nature, and then there's another thing which is called transforming your nature. Tra defying your nature is what's called the skafia, forcing yourself. You think about God, you get a little idea of what God is, <clears throat> and then you realize what I'm doing is not in tune with what God wants. And that's called forcing yourself. That, says the Rebbe, that's called a human animal. And compared to a tzaddik. A tzaddik is a person that he transforms his nature. He transforms his nature that he really wants to do. He enjoys doing what God wants. He enjoys doing what God wants. To the point of even giving his life. It's a totally different type of enjoyment. <clears throat> he enjoys doing what God wants. <clears throat> and that's a tzaddik. And in every generation, there's mainly one per, maybe one person like that. But he transforms himself. That's called a man. That's ideally called a man. And anyone that does not transform themselves totally to enjoy what God wants and does not enjoy at all his own desires and his own personal accomplishments, all he wants is what God wants. He feels every second that I am being created by God. I am a big miracle. I have to, I do Everything I do is only for what God wants. I don't listen to my own urges at all to the point where he doesn't have his own urges. He just does what God wants. That's called a man. That's Moses. And the goal of Moses is to make all the Jewish people into men. And then from that, the Jewish people can make the whole world into, into Adam. Okay, so let's go. Let's, let, let's go there. Let, let's do that over. This is where we got up to yesterday, right? There we go. Down at the bottom over here. Oh, it says this. The difference between a man and an animal, right? Look, and therefore, begin a zera Adam. <coughs> This is what's called a man, the, the seed of man. Hainu neshamas, the souls that have in them the level of dot. Dot means connection to God. God is real to them. Shehu amamshech giloya chachma. He draws down what's called chachma. Now, in the 10 spherot, we talked about this before. There's the 10 spherot of God, and God makes us in his image. We also have the 10 spherot. This is talked about in the Tanya especially in the third chapter of the Tanya. We're in the beginning. And there's an aspect of God which is called Chachma. Chachma is pure life, and it's translated as wisdom. The, the reason it's given that translation is because it's above understanding. It's not understandable. It's just a, a, a feeling that a person gets <clears throat> a connection to life, which is above understanding. That's called wisdom. He draws understanding from this wisdom. Okay, now in, in, in Judaism, it works like this. <clears throat> you use your brain in order to think about God. Because you don't feel God. Most normal people, Jews, don't feel God. Once in a while, maybe on Yom Kippur, or somebody calls him a dirty Jew or something like that, all of a sudden, it wakes up, no, I am a Jew, right? And it wakes up. But generally speaking, they don't feel God. And even when they do, they don't know what they're feeling. But what is this feeling? I'm a Jew. What does it mean? They don't even know what it means. But that's a feeling. <clears throat> it's called Chachma. It's above understanding. But the way it works is like this. There's great people like the Rebbe, for instance, and they write about what God is. And when you think about that and you start to think how close God is and that God is creating me, you think and you think that's called understanding, Bina. You think and you think and you think about God and suddenly you realize it's the truth. It connects to being able to see and feel God. That connection, that's called da'at. Chachma, bina, and vada'at. So bina is understanding. Chachma is seeing God. In other words, feeling God. What connects the two of them is called, what's called da'at. Da'at means connection. Therefore, this level of Adam, hainu, nishamot, souls that have this level of da'at, that they are connected, they feel God, right? In other words, just like you feel yourself. You're certain that you exist. How do you know you exist? That's called dot. It's a certainty, a feeling. 
<coughs> that's so. Okay, they have that. Shehu Amamshich. This draws down Diloi Chachma, a revelation of this level of Chachma. One second, let me get my pointer here. This is a revelation of this Chachma of seeing God, Ria. You draw down the seeing God, feeling the creator, feeling I am being created. You feel I am being created for a purpose. <clears throat> That's seeing God. You draw this down into heat bonanut, into your thinking about God. That from my flesh, I can grasp God really. In other words, you feel I am a miracle. God is creating me right now. I am not me. I am a, a, a creation of God. I can't. I should not do things what I want to do. And I, true people have their own desires and their own lusts. Okay, but I ignore that. I ignore that. I feel only the Creator is creating me <clears throat> and creating all the all of so my ability to have these lusts and desires and things like that. Masha'inki, which is not the case. Kishayimbechin is that if a person does not have this connection to God, connection. So therefore, which reveals Gilei Chachma, which reveals seeing as uh, then he's only understanding Bahavana of Lavada alone. It's like the marriage counselor, best marriage counselor in the world. He knows how to, 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 to take care of every problem in marriage counselors. People come from all over, but he personally goes home if his wife says the wrong word to him or burns his, uh, his, his steak or his uh, whatever it is. <clears throat> he has um, scrambled eggs or something that he gets angry. He gets angry and he could be, he throws a plate at his wife and he gets his right. He knows what he has to do, but his feelings, he feels himself. The same thing is we can talk about God and we can explain God and give lectures about God. You can be an expert in Kabbalah and explain all of the, the aspects of God and Hasidut, you know, all of the books of Hasidut and everything, but you don't feel God. <clears throat> you don't feel God. You don't feel, you feel yourself. But what? You just feel that I am a professor in Kabbalah and a professor in Hasidut, and I know all these ideas. I know them, but I don't feel them. That's called understanding without dot, without seeing. Nothing connects you to the reality, so you don't see. Dot is connecting you to reality, and be, and, 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 and Chachma, that's reality, feeling that God is really real, that God is really real, and from God's reality comes my reality. God is really real, and I'm not really real. <clears throat> I'm a creation. To feel that, to feel that, that's called bringing Chachma into Bina, seeing into understanding. And what does that? What brings them? That's called that connection. If a person only understands everything, but he doesn't really feel it, right? Like I said, the marriage counselor, he knows all the books, he knows all the tricks, he knows everything, but he does not feel that what he feels is himself. Then he's, that's what's called Shmin. He hears, he understands alone. Bina. He has a grasp, intellectual. It says Bina, that's in the world of Bria. In other words, he, Bria is, is a world of creation. He feels himself. Okay, and therefore, Nikra Zerabahema. People like that, they're called Zerabahema. So here we're talking about not a person that's insincere, a person like, right? He sits at the Hasid. <clears throat> he learns Hasidut, he understands the idea, he can explain the ideas of Hasidut, but he doesn't feel godliness. He doesn't feel, he, what he feels really is himself. Even though the animal hasn't got any, even though the animals usually don't understand anything. So how can you call a person that only understands God? How can you call him an animal? Animals, they don't understand anything. Why call him an animal? It says the, the humans are called humans that don't feel God. They don't see God. They're called animals. Why? Because an animal has kohamadama. An animal has what we can call imagination. Uh, you ever do the famous Pavlov? Oops, let's see, let's see, let's see, we balance over here. Famous Pavlov experiments. You ever hear that from that, I guess, comes all of this um, behavioristic <coughs> idea <coughs> in psychiatry, psychology. What did he do? This Pavlov, 
He took a dog, an ordinary dog, not a particularly intelligent dog, and he fed him, fed a dog, fed the dog. Every time he would feed the dog, he would ring a bell. Every time he would feed the dog, he would ring a bell. Then he noticed that when he brought the food in front of the dog, he brought the food in front of the dog, the, and the dog would start to salivate. Saliva would come as a preparation for eating. The dog didn't eat anything yet. He was just preparing himself to eat the dog. Right? So if so, we see that dogs, animals, have a power, have what's called imagination. They can see what's coming. And then, of course, what Pavlov did next, next is every time he would give this dog to eat, he would put the food in front of him, ring a bell, right? And then he would measure the salivation. Then he would just ring the bell without the food, and the dog would start to salivate. To show that the imagination is even more imagination than we thought, right? Here, he, I can understand he's salivating when he's eating because he tastes the food, he feels it. But here he's salivating, just the food is in front of him. So it shows he has a power of, a power of imagination. But the imagination, even more than we thought, even when we don't bring the food, we just ring the bell that usually come, came together with the food, right? Rang the bell. So the bell, that made him imagine there was food and that made him imagine he was eating. And then we thought, okay. So animals have the power of what we call <clears throat> imagination, right? They, they, they can, they, they say, react to things in the world before they happen. Also a seichel v'habana, also a person that he thinks about and understands God. Kishahaya, kishahu, rak v'bechinah shemiah. If a person just understands God alone, harizekam o bechinah dimyon ba'alma. This is something like ringing the bell in front of Pavlov's dogs, and they start to salivate. The same thing is we think about God, we think about it, and we can get sort of excited a little bit about it about the idea, but it's not really getting excited about, we don't feel God, we get excited about the idea. So it's the same thing, the Pavlov's dogs, they got excited just about the idea. They heard the bell, that gave them the idea of food. And we read these ideas about what God is and how God creates us and God gave the Torah, took the Jews out of Egypt and these different aspects of God and the 10 spherot and all this. So we think about that and we can sort of imagine that's called like Kid Moteno. That's called an, a man that God created man in his Form and in his image, that's called in his image. Ba'alza and Nehemiah it says, Hayinu kacholmi. That's what it says in the Psalms. We were like dreamers. What is it, Psalm 120? Uh, something, 123? Let's look and see one second. We were like dreamers. <clears throat> one. Wrong, wrong, I was wrong. 126. <clears throat> Psalm 126. It says over there, King David says that when God brings all <clears throat> the Jewish people back to their senses, builds the temple, brings them to Israel, then we'll see that <clears throat> the main accomplishment of Mashiach is not just a political one or a, a, a ge geographical one or whatever you want to call it. That they, they, I mean, That's also going to be true. Mashiach will build the third temple and he will gather the Jews to Egypt, to, to Israel. Wait, he will gather the Jews. <laughs> to, he'll take them out of Egypt. He'll gather the Jews to Israel. One second, somebody's over here. Who is this one minute? It doesn't make any difference. Okay. He will gather the Jews to Israel. He'll do this. But the main thing of the, the Mashiach is, is it's going to stop us from being dreamers. Come over, Chalon, just like in a dream. She'en nishar rakuach abadamer. Just like in a dream, all there is is just imagination, but you feel that it's real in a dream. Let's skip this so we can get it. Okay, one second. <clears throat> okay, that's what that's what it says. Man is made in God's form and God's image. That what it says, God's form, means that we have the ability to imagine God. But that what it says, we're, I'm sorry. That what it says we are made in God's full image. Image, that means we have the power to imagine God. But that what it says we're made in God's form, Salmenu, this is what's called Zera Adam. That's what it means we are made in God's form. That's seeing God. So when God made man, the first man, he already put in the first man and Adam the potential that there's going to be people that aren't going to see God. They're not going to be able to see God. They won't see the fact. They won't see the truth. 
<clears throat> and that's going to be almost all the Jewish people. Ah, but why is this thing like this? I understand why this big picture over here. Oh, oh, oh what's this over here? There we go. Oh, good. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, Hine. Okay, so now here we have the Jewish people. We have 99.99% of the Jews. If we're really, you know, ama amazingly lucky, then the Jewish people direct their attention to the Creator and they think about the Creator and they contemplate the Creator and they can even imagine the Creator. And with this power of imagination that they have, they do the commandments and they learn Torah and they act in a Jewish way, but they don't really feel the creator. They feel themselves. <clears throat> That's what's called an animal. Kidmutenu. That we are made in God's image. Moses was a person that was made in God's form, but Salmenu. And his job is to make the Jewish people feel the truth. Simply feel what they imagine. Hine Moshe Rabbeinu all of a shalom kocho gadol Moses has had the tremendous power shemamshich that he could draw down a mashpia between his dad between Eretz Israel. He could draw down this connection that Jewish people could connect to the Jew to into the Jewish people. They could connect to God. They could see God. Avgam ben Neshamos shenikra zira even in these low souls which are called zira behem. A feeling of God. Now, again, the, the other religions, especially those that try to take the, uh, replace Judaism, they 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 confuse the idea of what God is. But they believe in God, but they, they confuse the idea. <clears throat> Even though those that believe in one God, they believe that God is just some sort of a big power. And when you feel God, you you can't feel God. You feel God only when you go to heaven. You can't feel God. Judaism says no way. That's not the purpose. That's not the truth. It's a lie. That's a lie. That makes God far away. <clears throat> God is not far away. In fact, God is infinitely closer than you can possibly imagine. If so, why don't we see him? It says because we don't listen to Moses. We're not. We're not receiving properly from Moses. When we see and we feel God, we feel this physical world, this physical world is an amazing, amazing miracle, higher than all of the heavens that all these other religions promise and talk about. The physical, every detail of this physical world, every human being, every, every animal, every plant, every rock, everything is this incredible, incredible miracle that's created right now, presently by God, and is trying to send us all sorts of messages and <clears throat> hints, <clears throat> like some people have, you know, they, they go through novels of, you know, who knows, Shakespeare, or whatever, that he was hinting at this over here, the, remember once I went to a, a museum of, of uh, art, the, this, he, the, the artist over here was trying to show the, 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 the the, the beauty of the sunset and how it is and how he said and how it this and it, right? this little thing goes over there and this this means this and this means that. The fact of the matter is that everything in the world is, in the creation is sending us, telling us something about the creator. If nothing other than the creator is creating it. It's a miracle. <clears throat> like we said so many times, if you come across in the garbage, you know, somebody threw away a genuine Rembrandt picture in the garbage because it was too dark or something like that. So you pick it up. This is a genuine Rambam picture. You take it and you get it checked over. And somebody says, it's not genuine. I'm sorry, it's not genuine. It's not worth anything. Someone comes up and says, what are you talking about? It's not genuine. Look at this. I'm an expert. This thing is a genuine Rambam rant that is worth $500 million. That's because Rembrandt wired. And what if you look at everything in the world that's a genuine God? God is creating everything. God is more amazing than Rembrandt. He's a, he's a much greater an artist also. Everything is infinitely valuable. Everything in the world. <clears throat> but the Torah just tells us what to do with everything. That's what it means, Moses. Moses comes to give us an awareness of the, seeing the creator in everything. That's called dat, the hergesh who's to feel godliness. The yod, the yadat ayom, that you will, what's called, you should know today. 
Like it says, you should know the God of your father. <clears throat> because Moses is called Ryamahem. Moses is called the, the shepherd of faith or the faithful shepherd. Echad Miuchad, he was the one and he was unique. Misheva Roim of the seven shepherds. It was Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. These were the people who provided this feeling of <clears throat> awareness of God. But Moses, he was the special one. Shavroa Mafarnas, Moses was the leader of all the Jews. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, there was no real Jewish people there for, to make him troubles and things like that. Moses had all the trouble from all these Jews, and his job was, was to <clears throat> wake up in all of them their true Jewish nature, the form of God, which is inside of each one of them. To awaken this feeling of connection. That's what it means that Moses is a faithful shepherd, mainly Shemafarnes at the Muna. Every Jew believes in God, but it's very vague, very, very, how do you say, spiritual, not practical feeling <clears throat> that he has. Once in a while, somebody says, Hey, you Jew, you all of a sudden he wakes up. Yes, I'm a Jew. He feels, Yes, I am. Right? He, he, he remembers how his great grandmother used to light candles or something like that. <clears throat> wakes up this little faith inside of him. We'll see that in, in poor, and we'll talk about that especially. We'll get to the Mimer soon. <clears throat> Most, every Jew has this little sort of pilot light inside of them called emuna. It's flame, a very small flame that's aware that God exists and God is creating me and he's creating the whole world for a purpose. A little tiny little point inside of him somewhere <clears throat> that can't be extinguished. And Moses' job is to, is to, in, in, liar, to uh, raise up this flame. That it becomes more and more practical in our everyday life. It becomes more of an, an issue in our, <clears throat> our, our personality. What does God want? What does God think? Why is God putting me in this situation? How does God want me to react? Therefore, who goel rishon? Therefore, Moses it says he's the first redeemer, but goel acharon, and he will be the last redeemer. He will be the Mashiach. How is this? The Mashiach comes from Yehuda. Moses came from the tribe of Levi. It says, but the aspect of Moses is there. Why does it have to be in the Mashiach also? Goel rishon. That with Moses is the first redeemer. Shua mashpia that he gives lehem to the Jewish people. Bechinas adat. This feeling awareness. The awareness, hadibor in the beginning of his speech, talking to the Jewish people, he said to them, "Yodata, you should know, I am God." <clears throat> Before it says, it says first of all, it says that the people believed in God, believed in God. And at first, the people just believed in God. And then it says, by Moses, Moses said, and you will know God. That was supposed to be the purpose of the ten plagues for the ten spherot and the splitting of the sea. <clears throat> Those, they would see God. That was Keter, crown. And Moses will also be the last redeemer. He'll also be the Mashiach. He will fill not just the Jewish people, but the whole world. The whole world will be filled with the knowledge of God. <clears throat> that's what that's what Mashiach will do. Every human being in the world will see how precious this world is. Every Jewish people will see how close God, every human being in the world will see how close God is to them. God is creating them. But they'll feel it. <inaudible> because all of them will know me. Okay, we can let's skip this. That's what it means when Asati Asabasadakha. That's what it means when Moses said, I will give grasses in your field for your animals. Moses is going to give food to my animals. Moses only lived 120 years. Moses died, right? Moses died 3,300, whatever it is, in, in 38, 3, 338 years ago. 3,000 years ago. He died. How is he going to give food to my animals? Not only that, I don't have any animals. Says the Rebbe, yes, you do. Your animals is all the Jewish people. They're called Zerah Behemoth. They're all called animals. 
they only have a very imaginary connection to God. And Moses is going to give Asav, he's going to give food to these animals. He's going to give food and strengthen our faith in the Creator. Perish, Asav, what does it mean? Asav, and Moses, it says, I'm going to give grasses. I'm going to give uh, the grasses to your animals. The animals are called the animal soul, all the Jewish people, that they're like animals because they don't see God. They just imagine God, like an animal imagines its food or whatever. That's what, so Moses is going to make it that we can see God. He's going to increase our faith, our feeling, our sense of God. Asav, that's dot. The Asav is the same thing as dot is connection. How do you get that from? How do you get Asav is dot? Because this is the name Ab. <clears throat> Remember, we talked about the four different names of the, the, the four different gematrias of God's name, Yudke Vovke, according to how you fill it up phonetically. There's the, there's the 45, and there's 52, and there's 63, Sag, and there's Ab. Ab is, is 72. 72, that's the level of Chachma. Chachma. And the Shin is in the middle. The Shin is usually a connecting. Shin is, is the three pillars that connect. <clears throat> the connected there. So it means <clears throat> that Moses he says the name Ab, this name of Ab, that's Asaph, right? Moses gives Asaph, he gives grasses. He says, don't say he gives grasses, but he gives dot, connection to the Jewish people. How do we get dot from Asaph? He says, it's iron bait. That's the aspect of Chachma. That's Chachma. There's Ab, Sag, Man, Ban. There's Ab. Sag, man, bam, ab is usually chachma. Sag, 63, is bina. Ma is usually the emotions. And, and the, the ban is malchut. This is the level of dat, shehu, shem, ab, and the shem, oh, the, I'm sorry, it skipped line. Who dat, and it draws down zibug, it connects chachma with bina. That's the shin in the middle. So we said before, those people who just came in now, we Jews, we can think about God. And from our thoughts, our contemplation, we read what here, this mimer, for instance, about how God <coughs> creates everything. We can contemplate. And from that contemplation, we get an imagination about what God is. We feel, but we don't really see God. The connection between understanding and seeing God, that's called dot. That's called the feeling of reality. And that enables us to see the fact that God really is creating us. And all there is is God. God is creating everything. And how precious this world is because God is creating it. He's creating it purposely. He's not creating it just to, to confuse us. He's creating it because everything in the world has a tremendous meaning to it and value. Everything. And, but we don't see it. Seeing it, that's what Moses enables us to do. Moses is this thing of dot, connection. He connects the Jewish people. That's why we see a very interesting thing. The Jewish people on Mount Sinai, they saw God. And they felt God. But as soon as Moses wasn't there to continue this feeling of seeing God, right? they thought Moses wasn't going to come down. They made a mistake, but they thought he wasn't going to come down. They worshipped the golden calf. They understood God, but they just didn't see it. They didn't feel it <clears throat> because Moses wasn't there. It says Moses draws down this dot that's, that's uh, 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 referred to by Asaph. I and Beit is seeing God, we said, is the name Ab. And the shin is the dot that connects the two of them. It'll be drawn down into your field. The field is called Chakal Tafuchim Kedushin. This is a level which is called God's Malchut, the lowest level of godliness. It'll be drawn down in order that your annals, Behemtacha, which are the souls, the Jewish souls, which are called Zerah Behemah, the seed of animal, which the Rebbe said that's all the Jewish people except for Moses, everybody. Av Gama Malachim. It says even the angels. What, don't feel bad that you're called an, an, an animal. Don't feel bad that we, you're called an animal. As far as your Judaism goes, that you're an animal. You don't feel God. You maybe you understand God, but you don't see God. You have no connection to God. You are an animal. It says, don't worry, the angels are also called animals. It says, a malachim, even the angels, the four camps of the Shekhinah, Mechoel is God's kindness, and Gabriel is God's power. They're also called animals, and they're called chayot. She'em gamkein pene aria, the, the, the angels also, they come and says from the face of the lion, the face of the ox, that even though that animals do have a certain level of dot, the angels, 
even though the angels do have a certain connection and awareness of God, and it says that they totally surrender themselves to God, and they see God to a certain degree, the angels do, but nevertheless, not really. They're called angels because their understanding is only in a way of God's kingship, the lowest aspects of God. Their, their life comes from this lowest aspect of God, which is called God's kingship. They just understand a higher level of it than we do. And their life and their existence, and was, they just feel that God is creating them. They just feel it. They, in the fact, they don't really feel it. They just understand it. <clears throat> the reason they feel understand it, it more clearly than we do is because they don't have any bodies to confuse them. So they don't have any peer pressure and they don't have any you know, wives and mother-in-laws and, and you know, presidents and enemies and next door neighbors and things like that. They don't have anything to bother them. But they, they don't have the angels. But nevertheless, they don't feel God. They only understand. But their understanding is very, very deep of of under and they only but it's very deep. The understanding is very deep in, in their personalities, but they only understand the aspect of God that's the creator, nothing higher than that. Of a mahuso but God's real essence, late makshav, and no thought can grasp that. That's really what Jews saw at Mount Sinai. Malchus, this level of <clears throat> God's kingship, who shame, it's called God's name. That's what the angels perceive. They perceive God's name. Just like a name of a person, it's not God's essence. Okay, and therefore the angels are called behemoths, they're called animals. They haven't got really a true connection with God's essence. And therefore, Kadosh, therefore the angels say, God is holy. What do you mean, God is holy? The word holy means removed. I feel it. I feel that there is something there, but it's far away from me. It's holy. It's holy for me, right? If I say this, the the, the 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 holy temple, it's a holy temple. What does it mean? It's holy. Something unusual about it. It's something. There's something there that's above understanding. Israel is called the holy land. The Torah is called holy because there's something in there that's not some something there that's not understandable. It's not a normal it's called holy. The angels say that God is holy because God is kodesh removed from him. He's totally removed from them. The angels feel. And that God exists, they understand clearly that God exists, <clears throat> and that understanding is in the and the, that comes to a feeling, intellectual feeling. But nevertheless, that's the, that's the that's where they're at. They can't get the, the essence of God. The Torah, they have no conception of what that is. The angels, the Torah was only given to human beings, Jews. So Jewish souls are higher than angels. We're going to see that in a moment. Lochem, therefore, Gamaleim also on these. Angels, it says in the Tati Eseb Sadecha, Livem Techa, it says, Moses says, I gave this Eseb, this level of dat, we said, of connection in your field, which said that was Malchut, to the animals. Animals is also talking about the angels. That when the Jewish people do what they're supposed to, and then that gives also an additional elevation to the whole, all the worlds, all the creation, including the angels. This thing that Moses draws down, this connection, dat, connection. Who are you they? This is by means of Amirat Kadosh. The angels, they say, holy, holy, holy. This acknowledges the greatness of God, and this draws down an awareness to them. God doesn't need all their songs, their praises. <clears throat> but the angels do it for themselves. That by means of the angels saying holy, is drawn down to them. They put their attention to God. And this draws down to the angels a higher level of a connection to God. Hinei, behold, Yotzer Or, in the prayer of Yotzer Or, I'm just going to skip this. This talks about what it means, this level of seeing. Hinei, Biyotzer Or, when we, the first blessing that we bless before Shema, Yotzer Or. We say, okay, there's, every day it's a commandment for the Jewish people to say twice a day, Shema Yisrael. Shema Yisrael. And really that's the commandment, just to say Shema Yisrael. But ideally, 
you're supposed to fulfill when you say Shema Yisrael, this, well, the next sentence. Shema Yisrael is a sentence in the Bible, right? It's a sentence in the Bible. The sentence right after that, it says, you should love God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your might. So really the whole idea of saying these six words, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Elokad, is really supposed to be an emotional experience. <clears throat> You're supposed to feel the preciousness of God. You're supposed to feel the closeness of Hashem. How Hashem is creating us, how except Hashem is infinitely great, He's creating all the worlds. We're supposed to think about this. <clears throat> so that's the same, the, the, and this is what we, in order to achieve this level of Shema Yisrael and coming to love God, so in the morning prayers, we have two blessings that we say before Shema. And in these blessings, we think about things that God did and that God is that arouse our love of God so that we can say Shema Yisrael genuinely and come to love God. Because what does it mean to love God? Why should we love God? Well, if God is, you can do without God. God is not, you can't see him, you can't feel him. Certainly you're not going to value him. Right? It's like somebody wants to sell you an invisible diamond. Right? How much are you going to pay me for an invisible diamond? What do you mean? The thing is worth $10 million. I'll sell it to you $10. $10. I don't care if it's worth $100 billion. I don't see it. I don't. What am I, well, there's not, it's not valuable to me at all. The same thing with God. I don't see God. What am I going to... Why should, what's, what's there to love? What's there to value? <clears throat> so it says, okay... You know the angels are all burning up to God. Who says there's such a thing as angels? Isaiah saw them. Ezekiel saw them. Zechariah saw them. Saw the angels. What are the angels doing? They're all burning up to God. And every angel is as big as the universe. Three times as big as the universe. And they're burning up to God. So, you know, either the whole thing is just a big bluff. Or it's true. And if it is true, it means that the angels, there's what they are to... To this, and, and I'm missing something. I'm missing. The angels are all excited about it. God is creating them. God is creating me. The angels feel it. I don't feel it. So you start to think, well, maybe there is something to this. Maybe there's something to be felt. Therefore, as we read about the angels, that the angels are all saying, God is holy, holy, holy. All of them together, like it says in the Zohar, the lo makdishi le'olam ad the Israel makachi. They do, they do not say holy until the Jews say holy first below. The Makachi and Kulachara, that's, that's what it means <clears throat> that the angels and the Jews, they say God is holy, holy together. Pirish ki, Gimel almost, why did it say holy three times? Because there's what we call three dimensions of godliness. Generally speaking, we say that there's four, but the fourth is called Atzilut, and that's not, so to speak, a dimension of godliness. That's revealed godliness, Atzilut. That's where these Zera Adam come from. That's where the big Sadiqim souls come from. But our souls don't come from such a high level. And they come from lower levels, which is called Bria Yetzirah. Bria, we said before, that's where understanding is, understanding of God. And nevertheless, the angels say three times, holy, holy, holy. Why three times? Because there's three worlds, three dimensions of God. Shehem and Nikra, they are called Bahama. Three levels of this animal consciousness that we have. We don't really feel... The, Pure feeling, really feeling the essence of the creator, that's atzilut. That's without any veils, without any concealment. It's right here, but we don't feel it. It says, we're like animals, right? Animals, animals are also, we'll take an animal, put them into a room, a university room where there's all this, uh, you know, mathematics written on the board. All the mathematics is there, you know, and the, the, that's what's written on the board. That's just showing certain principles that are everywhere. Are, you know, principles of nature that work every day. Animals are there. Why don't they get it? Because they haven't got the, the, the a connection to that whole thing. They're not that, says that, but it's the same thing with us. God is everywhere. We're like an animal with mathematics. <clears throat> In fact, even more, uh, mathematics is, and an animal are part of the world. But we and God, God is the creator. So God is holy. And was, we're aware that there's something. I mean, we're being created and we know we're not creating ourselves. That's the same thing with the angels. The angels, they feel clearly from their understanding, intellectually. That's the level of an animal. 
to these three levels, these three worlds of Bria, Yetzir, and Asiya, these are the also corresponds to in us thought, speech, and action. Yisrael, all of them, says the Jewish people, they rose up in God's thought. <coughs> <clears throat> even those souls which are called Zerubim, which are called animals, and they are come from God's thought. This is what's called the world of Bria, which is not the case. The animals, the angels, the angels, they come, the word of God. So the Jewish people, they come from God's thought, and the angels, they come from God's speech. They're part of the creation. The Ruach Piv. And we're talking about the Jewish soul and its essence. We're going to have to stop here. <clears throat> the Jewish soul and its essence is higher than the angels, but the Jewish soul, how it comes down and is put into a body, is, of course, much lower than the angels. The angels, the Jewish people, souls, they come from what's called the world of Bria. That's from God's thought. The angels, they come from what's called God's speech. That's the world of Yetzira. Therefore, Ein Yochelim, the angels are not able to say holy, 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 until the Jewish people say it first, because the Jewish souls are higher, and we're going to talk about this, we'll continue in it tomorrow, and Moses is the one that draws down to the Jewish people from his source, which is even higher than everybody else, <clears throat> Moses' source is from Atzilut, that's even higher, that all the Jewish people will have this awareness of the truth, of simply what there is, and how precious this world is, and how big a miracle all of creation is, and how even a bigger miracle is when we can actually do what God wants in this world. And give God pleasure. But we'll talk about that, God willing, tomorrow. Now let's do go to the Maimon. <clears throat> One second over here. Ah, yes.